Hi, it's me again with Corel Roll Tips and Tricks, and this is part eight of the toolbox for beginners. We've already talked about all the tools from the polygon up. Now we're going to talk about the text tool. Probably the most important thing I can say is with nothing selected on your board, pick your pick your text tool. Don't touch it. Don't hit anything on the mouse, and you can change this. We can change it to this font. Hit air, hit artistic text, put OK. Let's make it 200 points. Artistic text, say OK. Then when you type out, it's going to type out artistic, or that text, um, abstract groovy, every time at that point. Now you can change it, you know, midstream or whatever you want to do when you have something picked. So we can make that. And another thing, even though it says just 200, you could probably go 300. A lot of times there are some things in there you can put. And uh, so now that's 300 points. Now, so, and the other thing, and so that's how you really set your font. I'm going to set mine back to arrow. So without, see that's selected, so I can't do it. Deselect everything, go to your text tool, go back to Arial and artistic text. And I want 72 points when I type. So now I'm going to type in Arial at 72 points. And I would always go to tool set as default. And then it'll save it for the next time. The other thing I can say about text is text are not inside. Fonts are not inside Corel Draw. Your, all your fonts, well, I shouldn't say all. Some Corels come with some fonts, but they're installed in your Windows. So if you go to your Windows folder under fonts, you can. that's how you're going to insert and install fonts. So every time you use the pick, the, the, the tool now, I'm going to get Arial 72 points. The next thing in HIST is the table tool. Pretty cool with the table tool. Let's say we're going to make some name tags. And this is the shape of the name tag. Well, we're going to hit this tool in just a minute, but it's the parallel dimension tool. Well, I want to find out how big that name tag is. That name tag is, I'll have to zoom in, 145 by 665. So if I make a rectangle, that is, with my ratio unlocked, 5.65, by 1.45, I made that exact same name tag. I'm going to put my nudge factor on 5.65. That's a really big name tag, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just hitting Control D. Now you've got all these name tags, and we're going to, uh, the other one was, what size was it? 1.45, change our nudge factor to 1.45, grab this, hit the plus key. Now the disadvantage in this, of doing it this way, it's going to save wood, but it's going to be a lot of time in the laser because it's having to cut that line twice. It's having to cut this line twice. The good thing about building the name tag with the table tool is that you could go and break the table apart. You can go to object and ungroup it. You don't have to do all that, to sh but I have to do all that to show it. There's only one line there. There's only one line there. So it's only going to cut that line one time. It's going to save you a little bit of wood than having them separated out, but it's going to save you a lot of laser time. I mean, if you think it's got to cut one, two, three, well, one, two, twice. So one, two, three, four, five. It's going to cut six lines instead of cutting four lines. One, two, three, four, five. So I've got more down here. But, and when you're using the table tool, you can pick how many boxes you have. Let's go back to here, right up here. I want four by four. And here's another little good trick. Hold down the control button. Let's say I want those squares to be four inches square. Well, four times four is 16. With your ratio lock, just type in 16. And now each one of those blocks is four inches. We can kind of prove that with the virtual uh, parallel dimension tool that we're going to talk about in just a second. Now you have a block that is four by four. And if you needed to cut out a bunch of shape, this would probably be the fastest way you could do it. All right, we've already talked a little bit about the parallel dimension tool. But the parallel dimension tool is going to measure stuff you can't measure. Okay, Corel's telling me this thing is four and a half inches long. But how long is this little tongue right here? 
We'll grab the parallel dimension tool and go right there. That tongue is 1.28 inches. One thing you could never do is measure how far it is across at that angle, 1.35. There's that tool that's good in that angular dimension tool. Well, horizontal and vertical is basically the same thing with the exception that it's, you know, uh, kind of geared uh, a little bit differently. And the, I like the parallel dimension tool over this. Uh, sometimes this is a little bit almost confusing. It's the same exact process, but it's just, I don't know. I don't really know the difference. Let's try that same thing with the parallel dimension tool. We're going to get the same figure. And it even, even turns the text the same. The other one that's just like it is a segment it's you click on one part and click on the other and it gives you the measurement. That's pretty cool. Um, I never even thought about it. It's measuring this distance. Let's get the parallel dimension tool. Go from here to here. Boy. So that is cool. If you watch this, um, let's take these two away. It's going to go across there. I've really never... I'm kind of learning something myself this morning. Go from there down to, you need to bring it down. It's going to measure that distance to the next point. I didn't have to go over there. Let's go here. I bet it messes up because that corner. Well, there's 1.63. There's 1.14. It's just a little bit different. Now, the other one is the angular dimension tool that I use a lot. You can grab a point like that, stay on that line, and then without holding anything down on your mouth, that angle is 57.26 of an angle. Let's find out what this angle is. Start at your starting point. Turn that around. I'm not holding anything down on the mouth. That's a 22.74 angle. If you add those up, <clears throat> you'll get the even amount. The other one on here that I very seldom have used, three-leg call out, it kind of works like a, um, you know, if you need to identify what that corner is, then you could type whatever you wanted at the end. It automatically does that. You need to start at your point and go backwards. That way your arrow there, that way your point, point is in the right direction. It is pretty cool. I just don't ever use it. It even centered it on that line. Anyway, I hope that helped a little bit.